So we're in a series. Let me share my heart a little bit. Let me share the word a little bit tonight because, as we said, that is the key to it all. We started a series last week. We're going to do a short one the next couple of weeks, and it is called Leap of Faith. Now, the dictionary defines a leap of faith as an act of believing in or attempting something whose existence or outcome is incapable of being proved. And I said last night, I will repeat it again. In the walk with God, there are going to be many times where even though every day is a step of faith, there are going to be times he brings us to monumental places that are going to require that leap of faith. Attempting something whose existence or outcome is incapable of being proved. Now, last night in part one, we kind of, or last week, we kind of talked about the subject of going for it. We, we come to that place. God will lead us to that place. I promise you, if you walk with him long enough, he will lead you to a place that seems like you just cannot get from here to there. But it's the only way, as God takes us and says, I want you to grow. I want you to bear more fruit. I want you to hit your potential and reach your destiny. It is going to require that ultimate leap of faith. And last week, we looked at some of the Tribes of Israel, 40 years into the journey, they got to the place and it was time to cross the Jordan and they said, we don't want to move from this place. They were suffering from the comfort zone syndrome. It can happen to us. We get somewhere wonderful and we just want to stay because it's just easier to stay than it is to get up and get stirred. But as we walk through it, and I, I encourage you to listen to it, it's posted on YouTube. We found that complacency is a thief. They got complacent. And their own actions caused them to miss God's blessing. Complacency can keep us from our potential. It can keep us from challenging and pushing and moving into areas that can be so wonderful. And as we learned with them, we will see even in our own lives that there is always a price to pay when we don't obey so perhaps for some of us, it's time to get uncomfortable. Yeah. A leap of faith. Now it all has to do with this beautiful verse in Hebrews 11.1. 1. Most of us are familiar with this. It basically defines faith as this way. Faith is confidence in God, hope in God, assurance in God's faithfulness. But it doesn't talk anything about what we see, and it does not mention anything about feelings. <laughs> Nothing more than feelings. I heard some of you. When this picture came up, some of you went, aww. Brandon did. He's the only one I really heard do that. But <laughs> you know why? Because we look at that, and it just looks so warm and fuzzy. And we like the warm and fuzzies. We like to just get a place and go, oh, thank you, Lord. I, all, all my needs are being met, and there's nothing stretching me. And I, I have those couple of friends, and they're wonderful. And I, I have my little ministry, and then God comes along and says, it's, it's time to change. And we go, but I want to stay here. I have found in my walk with God Then, as he has continued to challenge me, rather than the warm and fuzzies, I often get the cold and scratchies. I get to places where I'm like, I don't like this. Remember the first time that I was asked to lead worship? It was in a very traditional church down south, and I, I had spent all those years as a professional musician behind the black and whites of a keyboard, and I loved that view, and I still love that view, and it was so comfortable, and God opens the door for me to lead worship in a church where I had to lead from behind a podium, not playing anything. I remember standing there and screaming in my head during the songs, I hate this. I am so uncomfortable. It was a huge step where God says, if I can make you uncomfortable, then I get all the glory with what comes out. Because then it's me molding. It's not your will. It's my will. And then he gets all the glory, and we get to enjoy his favor and blessings. Now, God gave me some stuff for this part two, and I feel like we're going to deal with the what if. You see, even if you get the courage to take that leap of faith, I want to make a statement tonight. A lot happens between the leap and the landing. Ooh. 
Some of us were sitting in this service last week, first and second, and I saw the Holy Spirit dealing with you. And I saw him stir in your heart. I saw some emotion. It wasn't because I was, you know, stirring it up. It was because the Holy Spirit was talking. And I saw some of our wonderful people respond, sign up for some of those ministries we need help with. But I guarantee that shortly after that, there began to be a lot of what ifs. I've been there and I've experienced it. I'm hoping I can help some of you tonight, not only individually, but also us as a church, because we are about to take a leap of faith. Now, back in the beginning, in the 2015, that summer, you heard some talk about it on the video. We had those prayer meetings. We began to feel, Debbie and I began to feel that God was absolutely calling us to start this church. And uh, so, you know, we, we prayed and we said, God, if this is you, and he confirmed it. So we said, okay, God, we will answer the call. But how many know in this day and age that nothing is official until it's Facebook official? Anybody know that? Yeah. I'm told you're not really in a relationship until you post it on social media. Then it's official. So let me read for you something I've never shown before. August 25th, 2015, I posted this on Facebook. Debbie and I are excited to announce God has opened the door for us to plant a church in the West Hampton, New Jersey area. We have begun home meetings as we search for our venue. We will post details of our September schedule soon. We put it out there for all the world to see. But what isn't mentioned here is we had no place to meet yet. We said you belong, but we didn't tell them where. And there's some other things that aren't seen here, but I can share with you now. I had recently resigned my post as an associate pastor at another church. And they basically gave me a backhanded blessing out the door. I think I got a plaque. I don't want to tell you where I put that plaque. It's between me and God. (laughs) But I had no more income. It was a full-time salary, and it was gone. Now, I had a company that was looking at hiring me, but they hadn't given me a salary yet, and they hadn't decided what the amount was going to be, and they hadn't told me when I was going to start. That isn't mentioned here as we put it out and made it Facebook official. We had no church organization that was going to sponsor us, nor did we want one. We felt God was going to have us be independent and do this for his glory and do it his way. But I'll tell you what, when you go through that and you put it out there for the whole world to see, it can be a little nerve-wracking, even though God said, listen, I will be your source. And he has. Now, what I didn't show on this is there were hundreds of responses The outpouring of love, support, encouragement from friends of ours all over the country. And I began to feel on my leap of faith like, this is wonderful. (laughs) This is just so wonderful. And then some time went by and I got thinking about it and I went, this is awful. (laughs) What have I done? I've posted this, and I don't know what we're going to do, how we're going to live. Here's what I dealt with. What each one of us will in the... i got to get rid of that. That's just too distracting. (laughs) What what each one of us will deal with is those what-ifs. God stirs us, and we, we, we take that leap of faith, and between the leap and the landing, we are tormented sometimes by the doubts and the fears. You know how God describes Satan? He is the accuser of the brethren. He will always point his finger and tell you what you are not, tell you what you have done, tell you how deep it is. He is the father of all lies, and in your leap of faith, oh, man, he will pour out those lies. You'll hear things like, maybe it's just my emotions. Maybe the reason I said I would help in children's ministry, please, I hope some of you did. Maybe the reason was just emotions. Maybe that voice is me and not God. Anybody ever wondered that? Liars. We don't sure. We're not sure. We, we think we got it, but we're not sure. And the, the what ifs. And meanwhile, we're continuing to go down. And then we go, what if God changes his mind? What if I get involved in that? And he goes, my bad. No, 
No, I didn't mean children's ministry. No, I meant seniors ministry. No, you, no, my bad, sorry. He never says my bad. We get out there and we, we wonder. And then probably the most common one of all that every one of us will deal with is I can't do. What if I can't do it? What if I get there and I'm not good enough, not strong enough, not faithful enough? What if I'm not holy enough? All those things will happen. I'm telling you, here's some help for you tonight. Scripture says clearly that we are to think, focus, concentrate on things that are positive of a good report, that are praiseworthy, that we are to think on things that, that are positive. Can I just help somebody? Instead of all those what-if negatives, how about we start thinking about some of the what-if positives? What if I find great joy in God's perfect will? How about that? What if? God blesses me in ways I never imagined because I took a leap of faith. Come on. What if, I love this because I'm living this. What if I make new friends and my life is enriched? It never would have happened if I hadn't taken a leap of faith. Listen, sometimes on that fall, the leap to the landing, just allow the Holy Spirit to shift your focus from the what if bad to the what if good. I've come home a few times in the last couple of months while we've been working through this new facility. And I've had some frustrating meetings. Dealing with a board of education and be dealing with, you know, bureaucracy and things like that. And I don't know. I don't know if I should do this tonight, but I'm going to. I asked the pastor. He said I could do this. <laughs> but there have been times, honestly, I come home after some of these really frustrating meetings. And I would just sit down at my piano at home and I'd just like be pouring out my heart to God. And found myself singing this song that to me became almost like an old hymn. It's an old song, but to me it was almost like a hymn. It goes like this. I'm free. proud. Listen, listen, it's just those weak moments, but God says, pour your heart out to me. I hear you. I have felt like he took me to that precipice. I jumped off. I'd love to mosh right now, right here. I would love that. I, I would love that. And on the way down, I'm like, God, where have you gone? I don't feel you anymore. And I'm about to be humiliated. What if they don't sign the contract? What if they don't give us the schedule we need? What if it will always come down to this church? One of the key bedrock verses of the Christian experience. If you don't know it, you need to take a picture of this on your phone and memorize it. Written thousands of years ago. Quoted tens of millions of times by believers just like you and me. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path path to take. That is my bedrock. That is my bedrock. That is what keeps my troubled heart so God, I don't feel you. And God, this is not going smoothly. And I do feel like I'm free falling, but I trust. I trust you with all my heart. See, sometimes the hardest part is we don't get the desired results. We expect it to be cause and effect like we do in many things in life. If I leave, the blessings I'll fall into a, 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 a river of money and blessing and prosperity. God says, you're going to take a leap, but only I know how the landing comes. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. 
And let me move through this real quickly. We have been looking in this series at that 40-year journey of Israel because there's so many common denominators to us as individuals and us as a haven church. So I, I want to pick it up tonight. They're about one year into the journey. They've come out of Egypt and their slavery. Moses is leading them. They've got the Ten Commandments, the Mount Sinai. Things are going pretty well. But Moses, not knowing exactly what's going to happen next, God lets us see a conversation between him and God. Exodus 33, let me read you a few verses. 12 through 13 says this. One day, Moses said to the Lord, you have been telling me, take these people up to the promised land, but you haven't told me whom you will send with me. Sounds like a little bit of, I can't do it by myself. You've told me I know you by name and I look favorably on you if... It's true that you look favorably on me. Let me know your ways so I may understand you more fully and continue to enjoy your favor. And remember that this nation is your very own people. Point number one, in your time between the leap and the landing, it's okay to pour your heart out with God and remind him of the promises he's given you. Not because God's forgot. But it helps agreement between your mouth and your words, confessing the promises of God to his heart, and it locks it in in your life. I have found in my dark, troubled days, I have gone back to things he's told me in the early days of the call of God, the word of God. I find that I know it's true. I see where he says, faithful is he who has called you. He will do it. And I stand on that, and I remind him of that, and it strengthens me in the moment. That's what Moses is doing here. In the next verse, the Lord actually talks right back to Moses, and he says these words. He says, I will personally go with you, and I will give you rest, and everything will be fine with you. Now, if you know some about the journey, it's hard to kind of put this in place. Because what we know is that Moses and the journey ahead of him was not necessarily going to be very fine. There was going to be a lot of rough roads. There was going to be a lot of places where it was just going to seem like God had forsaken them. The people were out of control. And we have to get the true meaning of this word rest. Rest in its original interpretation means the place of promise, the desired destination. That's what God was saying to Moses. He was saying, listen, I have called you. I am with you. My promise is that Israel is going to reach that promised land. I, I've, I've looked at this as a parallel to us as a ministry. And I've said, God, you know where you're taking us. I know it's a place of blessing. I don't know how it looks between here and there. But I trust your word. And I believe we're going to hit that desired destination. And Moses said, if you don't personally, if you don't personally go with us, don't make us leave this place. I've said that a few times on the Haven journey. Our average is we are moving physically every nine and a half months. So if you don't like the next place, don't worry. We probably won't be there a long time. <laughs> Hang in there, be a little bit patient, and let's see where God's going to take us. But I tell you what, the promise is true. He says, I'm going to go with you, but Moses feels like, Lord, I don't even want to step from this place. Now, this is different from the comfort zone that we looked at last week. This is a man saying, God, you're my only source. You're the only one that I can follow. But if you don't come, Lord, I don't want to leave from this place. He goes on to say, how will anyone know that you look favorably on me, on me and your people, if you don't go with us? For your presence among us sets your people apart from all the people of the earth. Look at those words. Your presence sets us apart. I looked at that and I said, that's how I feel. That's how I feel about this wonderful vibrant faith community the presence of the Holy Spirit so wonderful in the love that you express to each other Moses is saying that's it God it's your presence here among us 
The next two verses, the Lord replies back to Moses. He says, I will indeed do what you have asked. For I look favorably on you. I know you by name. And then Moses says, then let your glorious presence go with us. Show me that glorious presence. Notice how the first thing he's talking about, the presence of God. And now he, he kicks it up another notch. Let it be a glorious presence. Let it even surpass what we saw before. Let it even be greater than we've had already. God, we can't just have your presence. We need your glorious presence. I feel that in this journey. It's the presence of God that makes the difference. If pastor's asking me, what's the deal with your church? I really don't know. We just create an atmosphere through love and worship and fellowship where he shows up and he does the work. Yes. Yes. And I've said to you guys before, I'll say it again. When you come in those doors, don't leave your baggage outside. Bring it in. Because his is the only place where the burdens can be lifted. In his presence. Bring it in. Lay it at his feet. And leave in victory and freedom. Woo. The presence of God does that. I love that verse in Psalm 139. I can never escape your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. It's just such a beautiful reminder for us as a church. Where we're going is not out of the range of his presence. On the contrary, where we're going, he's already there. Your presence, he said, sets us apart. And where we're going Make it the glorious presence of God. I'm telling you, my heart's cry is show us your glorious presence. Let what we're about to move into this next season exceed our expectations. Change lives. Break the chains of addiction. Continue to do it. Mold and make marriages again. God, show us your glorious presence. Hmm. Let me tell you this, and I'm going to let you go. Starting next week, we are heading to a place that will definitely look different. But I'm telling you, it will not feel different. Because God's presence isn't in the lights or the sheetrock or the carpet. God's presence is the Holy Spirit in you and I, and he's coming with us. Listen, I, I, I know what's going to happen because of the abiding, encouraging, empowering, comforting, passionate, loving presence of God is going with us. And I want it to be even greater and even glorious, more glorious than we've experienced. I want there to be Growth like we've never seen in our individual lives. You know me, I don't concentrate on the numbers. That's God's job. I just want to be sure when the numbers arrive, we're prepared, we're ready, we are done our part, and he will feed and encourage and uplift. That is the key. It all has to do with the presence of God. So church, these are exciting times. These are times to say, you know, <laughs> I didn't see this one coming. In three years, God has been so good. My confidence tonight, church, as we leave these confines, is in the presence of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sing this with me tonight. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Matchless love and beauty and its worth. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Would you say Jesus? Because Jesus, you're the